Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. Things have continued to be mixed recently, to say the least. Now, is there any sign of a change as we head towards and beyond the Easter period? Well, in a word, I think the answer is no. But I'll continue regardless. So, as usual, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 26th. And at the outset, surprise, surprise, a low pressure is sitting close to the United Kingdom. So showers or longer spells of rain affecting large parts of the country. As I run the sequence, not a great deal changes in the short term at least. It stays unsettled, further showers or long spells of rain at times, but then through Good Friday and into the Easter weekend itself, there are some subtle differences appearing. The low pressure is becoming centred a little bit further west and more of a southwesterly or southerly flow is developing. So although it's staying mixed, wet at times, it could well be turning warmer. And if sunny spells develop, and I think they will in places, particularly in central and eastern Britain, it may feel relatively pleasant, at least for a short time before the showers or longer periods of rain return. Running this through to its conclusion, what we see is maybe a drier window on Easter Sunday, but then through Easter Monday, a nasty area of low pressure bringing a longer spells of rain to the southern half of UK at least. By the end of the sequence here, well, low pressure area is tracking further south than is typical, so the wettest conditions may well be in southern and central regions. Colder there in the north, an easterly flow moving across Scotland and white shading indicating the possibility of some sleet or snow, mostly over higher ground, I think. The upper air temperature sequence really paints a picture nicely. These, this shows forecast temperatures at about 1500 metres above sea level as well as surface pressure, low pressure there, and it doesn't go far away. The blues, the dark blues, which indicate colder, at times pushing into Scotland. So that is where the lowest temperatures are likely to be. But just stepping through the days to illustrate possible values, don't focus on the details here because confidence falls, of course, as we move forwards, but Wednesday the 27th, rather chilly really, just double figures in the south. There are showers or longer spells of rain affecting most areas really, and temperatures lower as you head into Scotland and Northern Ireland. Moving forwards to Good Friday, it's quite a mixed picture. Showery conditions being highlighted here, perhaps a degree or two higher, the temperatures into uh, the Easter weekend, so Saturday. The values now have climbed. We're seeing 12s, 13s, 14s in England and Wales. As that milder air pushes northwards, more of a southwesterly or southerly flow at this point. Easter Sunday, just at this point when I'm filming, it looks as though it could be the best day for getting out and about through the Easter period, but do keep up to date with short range forecasts because it's too early to be confident about the details. 13s, 14s in England and Wales again, and double figures there as you head into Northern Ireland and Scotland. But by Easter Monday, that area of low pressure was tracking across the south of the UK and it's bringing heavy outbreaks of rain to much of England and Wales. And with the cloud and rain, temperatures have been suppressed there once again. So all in all, not a great pitch according to the GFS. The Morgreps G ensemble plot, showing two, uh, well, 1.5 meter temperatures for London, indicates a similar story really, double figures early on, maybe a little bit of a dip there, but then through the Easter period, temperatures are rising, maximums close to 15 Celsius. Towards the end, Easter Monday and beyond, there's a bigger spread, indicating a lower confidence, a wider range of solutions. Up to Glasgow, it's a similar story really, albeit at a lower level. So it's not, even though we've got that cold air moving into Scotland at times, it's not a terribly chilly picture, apart from at the start there where the maximum is around five Celsius. We see something of a warming trend here as well. Although by the very end, beyond Easter Monday, it's turning colder again. So some support for that GFS scenario with the cold air 
moving back into Scotland towards the end of the first week. Also, with the areas of low pressure moving around close to the UK, it looks like it's going to be windy at times, so that may catch a few people out. This is showing forecast uh, wind gusts for London going forwards, and around here, the 28th of March, 29th, maximums on some of the Mog Reps G uh, runs going up to around 50 miles an hour. Now, if they are at the top end of the ensemble, but it's a possibility, more likely around 40 mile an hour gusts there, so quite windy. Rainfall. The charts here show forecast aggregates for days not five from ECM and GFS models. Rain in all parts of the UK, the highest totals generally tending to be in the west and the south. Lower amounts in Scotland and eastern England, but rain or at least precipitation for all parts of the country at times. The 0 to 10 day chart show totals have increased now and the distribution is clearer because the green and orange shading is focused on the south. Quite unusual, more often than not, the highest totals are in the west, the northwest of the UK, but because areas of low pressure look like they'll be taking a more southerly route, the wettest conditions may well be in southern Britain. Both of these models are suggesting that. So, in a more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare to each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, so the one which the animations were based on, Tuesday the 2nd of April. Not a very pleasant picture if you're hoping for settled conditions. Low pressure systems moving across the UK, high pressure there close to Greenland. So it's, it's an unsettled pattern, chilly at times there in the north, plenty of rain to come. The Canadian model, there are differences, but similar really, broadly speaking, low pressure close to the UK, high pressure to the northwest. The German icon, more of the same, perhaps a stronger signal here for cold air to be moving down across the north. The European ECM, a low pressure, high pressure to the northwest. Finally, the UK Met Office Global, quite a similar story, maybe a little bit flabbier, high pressure there over Greenland. Low pressure area is not so clearly defined, but it's unsettled or at least changeable. So taking more together, good agreement on a continuation through the first week of rather changeable or unsettled weather. Showers are longest spells of rain in all areas, perhaps turning warmer through the Easter weekend, but when the showers or rain come along, those temperatures will be taking a dip. Also, that chance of it being quite cold on some days at least in Scotland, so there could well be some snow there over the hills and mountains. Significant accumulations, I would think, over the higher parts for Grampians and Cairngorms. Does that generally mixed picture continue as we head through the second week? Trends and probabilities at this range, nothing more, as I always emphasize. Here's the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top, precipitation along the bottom there. Most of the runs are showing upper air temperatures to be above the 30-year average, which is indicated there by the thick black line. And it's just worth drawing attention to the fact that there are some very warm runs uh, starting to appear. And they have been there actually on a few of the recent updates, so this doesn't seem to be a, an isolated one-off run of a GEFS because these very warm runs have been showing up. And the ensemble mean, the thick purple line, has been pulled up to be well above that 30 year norm. And that's really in large part due to some of those very mild or warm runs which are showing up up to 15 Celsius there at the 850 HPA level. In summer, that could produce hot weather. Too early for it now, but it has the potential to be quite warm. But, and it's a big but, lots of rain spikes across the bottom indicating that it's going to be staying quite changeable or unsettled so even though we may have that warm air aloft which isn't a given but even if we do it 
doesn't necessarily follow that it's going to turn warm down at the ground level. Cloud showers, long spells of rain could all peg back the uh, possibility of warmer conditions, but it is something to keep an eye on. And the two metre temperature data tables reinforce the message because lots of yellow to start off with, 11 to 15 Celsius, but then the amount of orange grows, those are runs going for uh, 16 to 20 Celsius. So there's that signal here that even at the ground level, we could be seeing some warmer conditions through the second week. The nighttime lows also increasing, and the amount of yellow there, which is going for 11 to 15 through the middle part of the second week, suggests there could be some very mild nights as well. Here's the uh, GEFS data table showing the number of runs on recent updates, which have been forecasting temperatures to reach or exceed 21 Celsius in the London area. The maximum so far was on Monday the 25th of March, so going forwards from 16 days from that point, eight out of the uh, 31 in total. So it's a minority, it's quite a small one, but it's not completely out of the question. The most recent two updates though, have two and three runs which are reaching that threshold, but it is something to keep an eye on through the coming days. Manchester, a similar story, although more mixed, there's more signs there of cooler or at least colder air returning for time, and lots of rain spikes along the bottom there showing quite an unsettled pattern as well. Two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, Similar trends to London, albeit as a, at a lower level, there's less of the orange there. Also, there's still some blue indicating a greater risk of nighttime lows dipping to or below zero. Glasgow and the differences here are more marked because along the top, the upper air temperatures are suggesting that they, it's suggesting that they are going to be close to or below the average for much of the second week. There are some runs there, there's quite, which are showing it turn, turning milder, quite a big spread developing. But on balance, the ensemble mean is remaining below the 30 year norm through the first few days, at least perhaps climbing up a little bit above it towards the end. But a much stronger signal here for temperatures to be close to or below the average than there is as you head southwards where the converse is true. The signal there is for temperatures to be close to or above it. Rain continues to be a risk and also with those lower temperatures there is an ongoing chance of snow. 10 runs out of a 33 maximum which for snow row can plot on the first few days of the second week so I, I'll describe it as low to moderate but once more over the Grampians and Cam Cairngorms the possibility of quite a lot of snow. Maybe a good late uh, skiing season for the Scottish mountains. I'm not sure if those accumulations are going to stick around, but as I say, it looks like there could be a fair amount of snow over maybe say 2,000 feet. The two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, indicating that cooler signal, which was shown on the upper air temperature profiles. The top there, forecast maximums, light greens of between six and 10 being dominant, although there is more yellow showing up later on. So something of a warming trend towards the end, 11 to 15. They're still in a minority, but up to about 20, 30% of the runs. The nighttime lows, lots of blue there through the first few days at least. An ongoing chance of frost, air frost, because temperatures there dipping to or below zero Celsius. The rainfall distribution for week two, using the um, ECM probability charts, these each show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week, emphasizing the general pattern that I've been discussing, which is for higher totals to be focused on the southern half of the UK, at least through the first two days. The, the key point is that it doesn't really look like a standard west to east pattern with areas of low pressure tracking between Iceland and Scotland. The idea is that low pressure systems will be heading further south and is often the case. Moving forwards to the days four, five and six of week two, 
by this time the distribution is becoming more uncertain but still the green shading seems to be focused at least on the center and right hand charts across the southern half of the UK. Although there is a signal here perhaps for it to be turning wetter in the west and the northwest as well. So maybe transitioning back to a more typical uh, westerly flow across the UK towards the end of the second week. High pressure to the north starting to decline, low pressure areas perhaps taking a more typical track. Here's the 10 day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot. Does that really support the same idea? This is Friday the 5th of April. Well, it's still showing low pressure systems maybe going further south than is typical. But of course, this is generated by averaging out all of the individual runs in the ensemble. So it doesn't necessarily reflect the most likely synoptic pattern. With that said, unsettled or at least changeable being the form horse here. Going forward through week two, the mean surface level pressure data table for York also doesn't look particularly encouraging if it's a longer period of more settled conditions that you're hoping for. There is more yellow there for time. Those runs going for between 1011 to 1025 millibars, so at least a significant number of them probably pointing towards above average pressure but still they are in a minority. It's really the greens which continue to dominate through the second week. Runs going for between 996 to 1,010 millibars. A fair amount of blue there. So the signal is for pressure to be below the norm through the second week. Although it may increase a little bit for a time. So to summarize, week one, outbreaks of rain or showers. Some of those showers could be heavy as well. Snow continues to be a risk over the Scottish mountains. Windy as well at times. And this mixed theme continues through the Easter period, but temperatures could rise. And if you're lucky enough to catch some dry and bright conditions, it may feel rather warm. Week two, unsettled further showers or longer outbreaks of rain, still that risk of snow over the Scottish mountains. Temperatures, well, cooler than average in the north, but there is that suggestion of warmer spells developing in the south, but it is uncertain. So uh, there we have it, a very mixed outlook, more showers, longer spells of rain, rather windy conditions as well. No indication yet of a prolonged period of dry and settled weather, although there is that sign at least that it may be turning warmer at times through week two in central and southern and eastern parts of Britain. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, regardless of the weather, found it useful, and if you did, then please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Don't forget as well to keep up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.